just sort of or go over what I wrote here. A bent spirit, these are, this is my definition. You won't find it in the Western anywhere. My definition, the inner man being crushed by the destructive power of sin. Now, th there are some people who said that, that, the, that a spirit is your inner consciousness, uh, the thing that, that you, you use to think and plan and motivate your intelligence, your frame of mind, your tendency towards uh, depression or courage or fear. is what controls the inside of you. It's not your body, it's not your mind, but it's the inner you. It's what controls your emotions, your psyche, if you will, sort of. Uh, what makes you cry, what makes you feel, what makes you depress. And unfortunately, uh, Christians do go through emotional states and our spirit becomes bent. It doesn't break, but it becomes bent. And I'll tell you a little bit about how that happens, how your bent spirit happens. One thing the Bible says, if you look at verse Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 9, God punishes the children of iniquity. Now, that word iniquity is not the word that we use the word for sin. Sin is, it, it, it means to miss the mark. Iniquity means to bend. So sometimes your spirit becomes bent from environmental and sociological things, such as the society you grow up in. If your, if your parents raise you or read you and they had certain ways about themselves that were sort of destructive, say that they were racist, you grow up maybe a racist. George Wallace's daughter, uh, Peggy Wallace, was at the Selma March yesterday. And uh, she said she grew up under her father's, uh, George Wallace's uh, way of living, but her spirit was bent, but not straight now. Yeah. So you can have, you, you grow up, uh, your parents may be of some sort of maybe behavior, they have some kind of cursing behavior, and, and, or, or maybe a drinking behavior, or maybe a, a, some kind of sexual perversion, or maybe they bent you because they were uh, abusing you. And you grew up with a bent spirit. You're just not emotionally straight. Oh, you okay. You can make a living. You can get your degrees, but you're not emotionally straight. And a lot of Christians are like that. We are. Or you can have a bad marriage, and, and your spouse does something to you, and you become bent. And it happens all the time. Bent spirit. Not crushed, not broken, not defeated, just bent. You're not straight. And usually that's why we come to church. Most people don't come to church to show people how spiritual they are. They come to church to get something. And so that's what happens. So spirits can become bent. Or the Bible says this, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and from the moment of my conception. Your spirit is bent from the moment you were born because you were born with a sinful nature. So you can either have it from environmental, uh, or you can have it from a sinful nature. That is, uh, you were born into sin, the sin that was, came from Adam to mankind, and you were born bent. All of us were born bent. And then from the sociological and psychological and environmental ways we were raised, we were raised with uh, certain ideas towards women or towards men. Uh, and that is bent, and you can never s have a good relationship until you straighten out. Some people uh, are, are born with a chauvinistic attitude, some men, chauvinism, and, and they will never have a good relationship. They get that bentness out of their chauvinism, out of their lives. That's what happens so often. Spouses try to straighten out bent people. Uh, what you need to do is straighten them out before you get married. You won't have to try to work on them after you get married. But that's not here or there right now. We, that, that's, not, that's for another lesson. All right, we'll, we are where we are. So then, uh, you can endure human sickness, but a crushed spirit who can bear it. When you can't sleep at night, you can't eat or something happened, and, and your children got you bent out of shape, your finances got you bent out of shape, and just what, what's the cure for it? Because it's going to happen. If you live long enough, you're going to be you're going to be bent. So what's the cure? So I got four quick things that I'll. It looks longer than the sermon. Looks longer than what it is. I think. 
I think. But when I get to the last point, we're over. So you, at least you know that. So I won't go beyond. I, I, I don't get revelations up here. I get revelation when I'm typing. Okay. All right. At least God don't start now. <laughs> we had an agreement. <laughs> that we had an agreement. Okay. Number one. If I'm going to overcome my bent spirit, that is, if I'm going to be able to navigate life uh, with all my idiosyncrasies, all my craziness that, that I grew up with or that, was, that, that maybe happened because I was my childhood or maybe happened because of some things happened in my life as an adult, uh, maybe somebody heard somebody say something and it just got me not straight emotionally. First of all, I got to recognize that the root cause of my bentness is sin. Bentness. Miss Robinson, uh, 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 Miss Wilson, is bentness a word? Okay, we're just going to say it's a word. The root cause of, of your bentness is sin. That's the first thing. It is sin. The root cause of all your problems is not your spouse, not your finances, not the government. It's sin. That's where we got to start first. Look what the Bible says. Uh, by the way, let me just go back. Psalm 55, verse 1. That should be Psalm 51, verse 5. I got that wrong in the second scripture. That should be Psalm 51, verse 5. But the root cause of all of my bentness, all of my problems is not because of somebody, not because of my boss, not because of anything else. The root cause of all problems worldwide is sin. That's the number one thing we got to talk about before we do anything else. Everything starts from sin. Now, there's some other reasons, but the root cause of everything is sin, and every problem should be tackled in a spiritual way. Before you try to do it in a financial way or emotional way, do it in a spiritual way first. The very first thing is that uh, a mature person is open to knowledge. So let's look at how sin has come and corrupted the world. Number one, at, uh, Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 17, talking about Satan. Jesus said this, God said this about Satan. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty and you, you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor, so I threw you down earth. So sin began in heaven, and God cast Satan out of heaven. Isaiah 14, 12. How have you have fallen from heaven, O shining star? O shining star is Satan, by the way, son of the morning. You have been uh, thrown down to earth, you who destroy the nations of the world. So sin now is on earth. And we know the story of Adam and Eve, Romans chapter 5, verse 12. When Adam and Eve sinned, sin entered the world, and Adam's sin brought death, so death spread to everyone, for everyone is sin. The root cause of all our problems is sin. All our problems. Somebody tell Ben Carson, not prison, it's sin. All our problems are sin. Everything we go through. And that's, the, that's how we need to tackle everything, first and foremost. Always pray about it. Always seek the spiritual answer before you seek any other answer. That's the root cause. I'm having problems in this area. I'm bent in this area. I'm bent over here. And I'm, go back to the Bible first. That's why the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood, our enemies, but against evil rulers, authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, against evil spirits in heavenly places. That's where we are. All my problems, I don't care what kind of problem you have in your home, on your job, tackle it with the word of God first. Then you can work on some other areas. You're lazy. It's not because you, 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 you're having a bad day. It's because of sin. Because of sin. You're having a drinking problem. It's not because you like alcohol. It's because of sin. That's it. That's the root cause. If you're angry, it's not because you, you, everybody you meet is a bad person. Sin. That's why the Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, stay alert, watch out for the, your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him, be strong in your faith. 
Remember that Christian brothers and sisters everywhere are going through all over the world the same thing you're suffering with. So, th so the first thing I have to realize when I think about my emotional problems, my sometimes psychological problems, my problem of just can't get out of bed, my problem I just don't feel like having a blue. Does anyone have a blue Wednesday? I know we have blue Monday. Does anyone have a blue Wednesday? No one has a blue Wednesday, but everybody have a blue Monday. Anybody have a blue Monday? Sometimes you just can't get moving. Ain't nothing wrong with sin. Pray about it. Ask God to give you some energy, you know. So the root cause of everything is sin. That's the first thing I, I, I want to talk to you about. Number two then, now that, I, now that I realize that all my answer to all my problems can come from the word of God. Now, having said that, I do do other things too, but that's the root cause of my problem is sin. And if I deal, deal with that, then I can deal with other stuff. If I go to the word of God, I can deal with other stuff. So number two then, how to overcome my bentness is learn, and this is, I think this is important, learn to speak into existence words of victory. Learn to be positive, spiritually speaking, Speak into existent words of wisdom. Learn to say positive things. Look what the Bible says in Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. You can, I ain't no good, I ain't no good, and you're going to think you're no good. Yeah, I, I can't make it. I feel bad today. You're going to stay in bed. Yeah. If you say it long enough, you'll believe it. Self-fulfilling prophecy, you will believe it. And so you need to think positive things. The words of my mouth are deep waters. Your words uh, you hold will hold you in bondage or will set you free. I think I got too many yous in there. But your words will hold you in bondage or set you free. If you talk about how bad you are, then that's what's going to happen. And so we need to speak words of, of victory. And listen to these words of victory. I like this in 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, stand firm, let nothing move you. Give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Say that. My labor in the Lord is not in vain. I may be tired, I may be weak, but I am not giving up. Learn to speak those words. You, it's a spiritual problem I'm dealing with, but you've got to learn how to say it. I like what Romans 8, 20, uh, 38, 39 say when I'm going through some tough times. I am convinced when you think you're unloved and, you, and you're bent because of a relationship problem, your girlfriend or your boyfriend, you know, they either dump you or whatever, and you're bent because of that. And you feel in love because your parents or maybe you didn't get a birthday card. I don't know. Uh, but learn to speak words of victory in your spirit. Sort of like Joyce Myers has to say sometimes. I like what she says sometimes. Speak words of victory. Don't, uh, uh, don't, don't sort of say foolish stuff. I'm a millionaire and you ain't got a penny. I'm not talking about that. Don't be foolish. But learn how to speak the words of God. I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, nor angels or demons, nor fears of, uh, for today, or, nor worries about tomorrow, nor powers of hell can separate us from the love of God. When I feel in love, I say these words. I speak them into existence. No power above or earth below, indeed nothing in all of creation will ever separate me from God's love. Speak words into existence. And when you're having these bent times, and we all are going to have them, learn to speak words into I got a clip here that I want to show. The guy queued up. Uh, this man talks about the grace of God, and he's speaking words into existence, uh, using the Bible as his victory, words into existence. Some men, old, separated, apart, came down from Judea to Antioch to preach, to teach, to convert, I say to hurt. Teach, telling that unless circumcised according to the customs of Moses, you can't be saved. 
What? A stipulation I've heard of today. So is this freedom? Freedom from the chains of a slave master's hands? Freedom from society? No. A stipulation. The fine print. My gospel being wrapped up in the fine print. The print that nobody reads, nobody sees. The fine print. So I went down. Went down to Antioch. Went down the block. Down from the place I call home. So this will be my battleground, my line in the sand, the place where no one reads. But I can't come to the Father unless... Is this a test? Should I know the boxes that I should check? What is needed by me and for me and in me and within me and without me? Did I miss the fine print? Am I so evil that my faith is wrapped up in a thing I do to forget who I am? Am I so lost, so forgotten, so out of time, so out of tune, so out of my mind that my identity is wrapped up in my sin? So I went down, came face to face with a Pharisee and asked, what am I to do? You told me that I have to before I am, before I can, before I must be circumcised, before I see him and live in him and feel joy in him and laugh in him and cry in him. Brothers, you know that some time ago, God made a choice among you. The Gentiles might hear from my lips the message and believe. Think about this. Before I was a twinkling, a memory, a thought, he knew me. So now in the fine print, he can't, he won't. You play upon my sins, my past, my unrecognized yesterday, my past. I am a liar, a cheat, a blasphemer, a murderer, a thief. I have malice in my heart, lust in my mind. I fear nothing. If I am evil, unforgiven, set apart, unworthy, unexcusable, unattainable, then how do I stand in the gap and find my way? We believe that it is through Christ Jesus our Lord that we are saved. Grace understands. Grace understands that I have no claim now actions are my own. My mind is my own. My sin is my own. My wrongs are my own, but my heart, my heart belongs to another. It is no longer me, but he who lives in me, my grace, his grace, his touch. It is too much for a man who is a blasphemer, a cheat, a thief, a murderer, an idolater, a failure, a person set apart. His grace causes me to be more, more of a lover, life giver, touched. I breathe now and live now and receive now his grace. His grace tells me that I am, has been with me and fights for me and doesn't reject me. His grace abounds around me and for me and is me, his grace. His grace isn't a blessing at a 10 course meal or a point in the middle of a field. His grace is now, his grace, that grace, fulfilling grace, pouring into me and around me and fulfilling me and living in me and loving me and caring for me and caressing me and crying with me and is made for me. His grace. Speak words of grace. Speak, let's give God a hand. Let's, let's, let's gotta speak words of grace. Whenever you are having these bent times and we all do anybody bent in here now you've been bent for a couple of weeks jack you've been bent anyone else okay uh who's that miss donna's been bent who's got miss donna who's that with, with you who sister no you what what you don't don't give us too much detail but what got you bent give us the detail <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I, I get it later. But the point is, is that we all are bent of some way, some form, or some fashion. We all are. We go through bent times. The kids got you bent. The finances got you bent. Your spouse got you bent. The job got you bent. And Christians are like that. And we don't deny it. It's just the way it is. And then we just got to get straightened out. Now, sometimes, unfortunately, sometimes we are bent. And we are bent from things happened years ago. When you do counseling you, and, and, and you talk to people who've been abused years ago, they've been bent years ago or something like that. It's hard, but it's a sin problem. But speak words of victory. This is what uh, Joshua said. Uh, well, uh, Psalm 23, that's a good one you can say at night. For though I walk through the, val the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. Speak those words. Learn how to speak those words. Some people like to hear a hum a song, that's fine too, but uh, I prefer speaking the Bible than humming a song. If I'm going, if I got the choice, but humming is fine. If humming gets you through, that's okay. Uh, Joshua one eight, keep the book of the law always on your lips. Meditate. That word meditate means to in our in, in our vernacular, it means to regurgitate. 
It means to say it over and over again, not think about it. Back in the 60s, when you, when you were meditating, you sort of just cool out and check out. Now, I'm not talking about that craziness. But it means to say it over and over again. And so Joshua says, I'm going to say the word of God over and over again. What words? The words of victory. Learn to say that. And you can't, God can't bring things back to your memory unless you memorize something. Who, who, who here memorizes scripture? One person. <laughs> uh, I feel like that the, the TV character, uh, uh, what's that, Beverly Hillbillies, when the grandfather looked at Jeffro. Goodness, boy. <laughs> I got to have a long talk with that boy. Who in here memorized scripture? Somebody has to memorize scripture. This is, this is the church. Don't we do that? Isn't it to God? <laughs> in the beginning, God created. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Y'all scare me. Goodness. <laughs> okay, number three. Number three. Uh, if, I, if I have a bent spirit, if I have a bent spirit, uh, one thing that we ought to do is seek out someone you can share, and this is key now, yourself with. Someone you can share yourself with. And that's important because you don't want to share yourself with just everybody. Someone you can share yourself with. When you have a bent spirit, it's almost like the Dead Sea. We talk about it a lot. It, 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 uh, the Dead Sea is dead because it has no outlet. The, the water goes into the Dead Sea, and it just sort of settles. Those of you been there, it just sort of settles in, in there. Well, your body's the same way. A lot of tension goes in. If you don't have an outlet, it eventually kill you. You can't take it. You can't take a lot. You've got to have an outlet. But it, it should be an outlet that doesn't cause devastation, you know, um, you don't want to, as, 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 as it says, unfortunately, uh, make people angry. You've got to have an outlet. The Bible says this in Proverbs 18 and also Proverbs 25. A breakdown can begin with a heart filled with pain. Normally when people have emotionally breakdown because they can't take it anymore and they blow up, explosion time. But you've got to have an outlet. You've got to have someone you can share yourself with. Now, the, 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 the thing that we hate to do because we call that therapy, and nobody wants to go to a therapist because you don't want to be considered, you know. But the word therapy really means, in its root meaning, it means someone who pays attention to you. That's all you want to do. You just want to have someone to pay attention to you. You can go to the psychologist or the psychiatrist and, and give them $100 an hour, you can come to me and get it free. That's all it is. Or you can go to your best friend. But you got to have someone you can share with. Does anyone have anyone you can share with, you, your inner self? Your sisters don't have, you can't share with your sisters? Hopefully, you, it, you, you can share with your sisters. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> all right. If you don't do that, if you don't do that, it'll be bent. The Bible says this in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, and talking about Adam and Eve. Uh, when Adam was created and, and all the anim animals were there, uh, the Bible says that, that God, Adam didn't have anyone he could share himself with, so God created a woman to, so he could have someone he could share with, share his feelings with. And the Bible says this, the Lord said to uh, it is not good for man to be alone, to have someone he couldn't share with. Uh, I will make him a suitable companion. And that word really means someone who will listen to me. That's all. That's all. It wasn't for anything else, just someone who could listen, would listen to his, what he had to say. Then it goes on from there. Other things can come into play. But primarily, it was just someone. And so that's what you want to do. You want someone you can share with, share yourself with. If you don't have anyone you can share with, then it's all built up, all built up. Counseling is important. Proverbs eleven fourteen. 
where there is no counseling, and this is, this is sad, where there is no counseling, where there is no one you can talk to, you can expect failure. You've got to have someone. If you're walking around here and you don't have anyone you can, I'm not talking about sure, you know, what you did last night and all that kind of stuff. That's not yourself. I'm talking about you, inside, things that really hurt you. Everybody don't get to hear that because you've got to have somebody who could. Because if you don't, you would just, you may, you'll be okay, maybe, but you'll always live bent. And you'll never be able to live the, the magnificent life that God has for you. You'll live a great life, but not what God has for you because you'll always be like this. You'll never feel the air on top, but you'll feel something. You, you go through life that way. Many people have died, gone to heaven, but you never got the abundance because you never stirred yourself. Now, it's should be spouses and this should be, um, but you can share your inner hurt with them. The Bible says this in terms of sharing. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. There is a time for everything, a time to be uprooted, a time to turn down, a time to weep, a time to mourn, a time to forgive, a time to spend, men, a time to be silent, and a time to hear. Okay, number one. You need to recognize that the root cause of your bentness is what? Number two, learn how to speak into existence words of, and then seek out someone you can share. All right. If you ask someone, can I share myself with you? And if they blink their left eye, that's not good. Okay, number four. I didn't say wink. If they just blink, they just blink. It's not good. Um, number four and last one: how to overcome a bent spirit is when you when you have a bent spirit, turn your attention to helping others who are bent. It's the last one. There's probably a lot more, but turn your attention to helping others who are bent. And it is amazing. I don't quite understand this, how it works, but God, some kind of way, when you seek out others who are hurting, God looks at that as a favor to him. And God will help you through your crisis when you help someone. What Satan tells me, I'm a child of God. Amen. Even though what I tell myself sometimes, I'm still a child of God. Amen. Even when somebody tells me something, I'm still a child of God. Even when I feel bad and I fall on my face, I'm still a child of God. Amen. Because positionally, God sees me as holy.